good eye. That show leaves no hope as how a sniper wins a game. Good day, everyone. This is Nick Bro 101 here. Just like I promised in my previous guide, here I am with my sniper advanced guide. This guide is made for those who already have some experience in playing sniper and want to improve their game. If you are newer to the game, then this guide isn't for you, and I would recommend that you watch my beginner's guide on playing sniper. I first want to point out that I have little experience in competitive play. I tried to make this guide suitable for both competitive and casual play, but I'll probably make a couple of mistakes when it comes to competitive play. Let's start with some general tips when playing as a sniper. First of all, try to learn how to quickscope. A quickscope in TF2 is basically a no charge shot. While the shot actually deals less damage, multiple quickscopes actually have a higher damage per minute than charging up your shot. Not only that, but as a sniper you are a glass cannon when scoped in, because of your limited movement and vision. Try to stay out of scope as long as possible, only hard scope when you are sure you aren't going to get spotted. Hard scoping should only be used as a way to kill someone in one shot when they haven't noticed you yet. In all other cases, quick scoping will be more effective so that you can dodge incoming fire and be more aware of your surroundings. Secondly, make sure that you have as little aggro on you as possible. Sniper excels at eliminating enemies one after another. You can't target multiple people at the same time. Because of this, make sure that you only have one enemy aggro on you at worst. If you have more than one player trying to kill you, then you'll most likely die. Also, if you know that someone is trying to kill you specifically, then try to take him out first, unless you can get a shot off of very important targets. None of us are perfect, and you may end up in a situation with more than one player trying to pump you full with bullets. In this case, think about the priority list and kill the guy aggroing on you with the highest priority. For example, if both a demo man and a sniper are aiming at you, then aim for the sniper. As a sniper, you aren't a lone gunman. You have a team, so use it. Stay near your team so that they can cover you from close range encounters. They can cover you from something that you lack at, and you can cover them for something that they lack at. For example, if an enemy demo man gets a bit of a distance from a heavy, then he can easily out damage him with his grenades. You can punish the demo for that as a sniper. Concerning your sniper dot, a lot of people will say that you should always hide it in front of the corner that you are aiming at. I disagree. First of all, if you can hide your dot somewhere where the enemy has to pass your crosshair, then that is better, because you have your aim already prepared and you don't have to click your aim as much. But, even if there isn't a spot to hide it, then it may sometimes be better to show your dot. If they see your dot, then they'll have to think twice about entering the area, or they may even decide to completely avoid you. By doing this, you can potentially lock down an area by just looking over there. This heavily depends on your positioning and how many flank routes there are available for the enemy. But do keep it in mind that the scare factor of your dot can slow down the enemy. Speaking of positioning, let's talk about that next. Keep in mind that when playing sniper, if you see something that isn't behind class, then you can shoot it. Use this mindset to find little cracks and holes to shoot through. While a lot of these spots will give you sight on a very specific area, you'll usually find these spots when you need them. When going to a proper sniping position to stay at, keep in mind how vertical your position is. You don't want your spot to be below the enemy. You can surprise people like this, but it isn't reliable to stay there. The high ground may seem like a great position, and sometimes it is, but it depends on how close your enemies are horizontally. Having to aim downwards too much will actually make it more difficult for you to aim. Make sure that you don't have to aim downwards too much. The high ground will give you a better position for self-defense, however, it will always be more difficult to aim than if you were standing on equal grounds. This may seem odd, because most sniper vantage points, if not all of them, are located in a higher position. Well, the reason for me to say something like that is that when you are on a high position, the enemy can move up, down, left and right. 
If you are on equal ground, then the enemy can move left, right and jump, which is predictable when you get used to it. The limited movement your enemy has will make it much easier for you to line up a headshot. You won't always have a long range encounter, people will rush you down eventually. In this case, you can watch corners. You can do this by running past the corner, get a bit of distance from that corner and put your crosshair at head level. Now just wait for the enemy to come around the corner and shoot him in the head. A lot of people will underestimate the strategy and just rush around the corner in a predictable way. When someone does know about this strategy, then they will usually jump around the corner instead of running. Try to anticipate this and prepare to flick your aim upwards when fighting one of these players. Now, there is one more thing about positioning I have to mention, and that is, as a sniper, you can use your WASD keys. Move around from one location to the next. Standing in the same area for too long will cause the enemy to start focusing on that area, either by avoiding your sightline or by flanking and killing you. I know this tip is being told a lot, but I see far too little people actually utilizing this. The main problem is that they go on a spree and they think that they will get another one in the same spot. However, they get countered immediately because they were so predictable. Everyone knows that a sniper isn't great at close range. But people have complained about being headshotted at close range by a sniper, but that is because they weren't paying attention to some tricks that snipers utilize to counter his counters. Or the sniper was just having an insanely good aim. Let's start with soldier. You should be paying attention to the sky to check if there aren't any soldiers bombing you or your team. Even a body shot has potential to send the soldier off course. If he tries to bomb you specifically, then try to surf off of his rockets to get a bit of distance. If you have to combat a soldier, then try to stay close enough so that they won't chase you with another rocket jump, but far enough so that you have time to dodge the rockets. At first, this distance may seem a little bit too close to you, but try to use a technique called reload switching. Soldiers have to lead their shots in order to have a hit, his rockets aren't hit scan. Because of this, he has to predict where the enemy is going. You can take advantage of this. Try to learn the timing when the rocket launcher is capable of firing, and change the direction you were walking in as soon as he is able to fire. You will think you're continuing to go in the same direction, but instead you went the other way. I am going to leave a link here to a video made by HR or Assiduous, sorry if I messed up that name, on this subject. He does focus on scout movement, but this works just as well with an average movement speed class like Sniper. When it comes to scout, the main thing you can do to counter them is one of two things. Either you learn his movement patterns, or you catch him off guard. Every player has a specific movement pattern. Try to figure out these patterns and try to find an opening where you can strike. Jumping is a very important moment. If the scout double jumps, his movement is quite limited. And that combined with the usual mindset of the scout in which he always seems to blindly rush a sniper when he is close enough in the air, means that you can easily predict their movement and pick them off. Be aware though if a scout uses a normal jump. Either wait for him to double jump, or if you know that he won't do a double jump, then go for the shot. When the scout is on the ground, he will usually use a simple strafing technique to dodge you. Take a bit of distance and try to find a spot to place your crosshair so that the scout will just walk into your shot. If you want to catch the scout off guard, then you'll have to see the scout from a distance first. If the scout knows where you are and is out to get you, then be aware of where you saw him and where he was heading. If you have done this, then try to predict when the scout would be near you and at which flank. In the time that the scout is running, continue to shoot at his team. You'll not only use your time more effectively, but if the scout hears sniper rifle shots or notices that you're still getting kills, then he will think that you forgot about him and he will become overconfident. When countering spies, you'll have to rely on your team most of the time. Spy is a very dangerous counter for a sniper. And no, this isn't because Valve promoted it like this. Unlike scouts and soldiers, you can't see them coming beforehand, so it will be easy for a spy to catch you off guard. 
the best thing to do when you are being killed by a spy over and over and you want to continue to play sniper, then equip a Razorback and stay near your team. Now you may think that a spy will just pull out his ambassador to shoot you if you have a Razorback, but if you stay near your team and your team knows what they are doing, then the spy won't bother attacking you because it will just draw aggro from not only you, but also your whole team surrounding you. If you are on your own, then all you can do is check your back every once in a while to check for spies. I know this sounds quite basic, but not a lot of snipers actually do this. The best time to check your back is when you are reloading your bolt. You've got nothing to do anyway, so why not use it more effectively? It is, however, sometimes more useful to use your crosshair to prepare your next shot. But if this isn't the case, then check your back. Sniper vs Sniper is a very common scenario in which you'll find yourself in. When fighting another sniper, you mainly want to outposition him. Taking a head-on fight is quite risky, with the second scoping strategy still being ridiculously effective. As a side note, Valve oh, please let snipers jump out of scope again so that second scoping is nerfed. You wanted to patch out the crouch jumping glitch by removing jumping after a scope shot, but you can still crouch jump jitter obviously, so all it did is buff second scoping. Please patch crouch jumping and add jumping out of scope back into the game. Okay, now back to the video. If a sniper saw you, try to make him think that you are going to be peeking from the same position, but instead move to another spot. The other sniper may figure out what you are trying to do, so try to do a trick that I like to call slow peeking. Basically, if an enemy sniper saw you, then hide in cover and try to quickly peek out without engaging so that he knows that you want to fight him. Make sure it happens really fast so that the enemy sniper doesn't have time to shoot you. After doing that, then all you have to do is stay behind cover. You want to have an alternate position in your mind where you could go and try to predict when you would appear there if you were to move as quickly as possible. Then, at that point, go peek out of your first cover again. The enemy sniper may have anticipated that you moved to the new location, and because of that, he will not be looking at you, making him vulnerable. This trick will only work on good snipers who think about enemies changing position. If you do have to engage him head on, and he is waiting for you to first scope, then you can increase your chance of hitting that shot by reading the enemy sniper's dodging patterns like we did with Scout. However, he will still have the advantage because second scoping is stupidly strong. Also, I almost forgot to mention this, you can change your scoped in sensitivity by using the console command zoom underscore sensitivity underscore ratio. A zoom sensitivity ratio I recommend is 0.8 and so on. You can put it in as many trees as you want, it doesn't matter at all. With this sensitivity, your crosshair will move the same amount of pixels both in and out of scope, which is great for your muscle memory. This trick will only work if your field of view is set to 90. Note that I set your field of view and not your view model field of view, which are two completely different things. If you are using the default field of view, then put your zoom sensitivity ratio to 1. Now you may be saying right now, Well, all these tips are fine and good, but how do I actually improve at pointing and clicking part of Sniper? Well, the short answer to this is turn off mouse acceleration and practice. No matter what anyone tells you about aiming, you'll have to practice and improve for yourself. I know it's an answer nobody likes to hear. I remember myself getting ridiculously annoyed by it. But if you want a long answer where I talk about the different aiming styles that you can utilize and the ways that you can practice them, then subscribe for my next guide talking about aiming as a sniper. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time. Why don't you do it now? The script that I'm writing is already twice as long as my beginner's guide, so I would imagine that people are already getting bored of just watching a video and not trying out tips for themselves.